for several months I've been following the progress on PTR and I hope it got better and I actually do not plan on continuing to spend money on my subscription um, for the level of content that I'm getting um, we had things in that and you can watch the other stream from yesterday we had things with uh, we had uh, text with quotes like I have a forest to blight or we are forsaken or a loon has forsaken us or it's so hard to find good help these days who is writing this like the post I made yesterday was pretty angry and I use a lot of bad words so I can't really use that but um it's pretty awful um I was just wondering what is the actual target audience for Warcraft now because the way it's written, like any anybody knows, when you're writing a document, like if it's a contract or anything, or a, an instruction manual, you want to go with the average intelligence level of the person that you're writing to. So the way they wrote this and how, how many cheesy one-liners they use, it seems like they're writing this for kids. And I put young adult, and apparently people like young adult novels. So I might even say like just children's story is like they wrote it on the children's level like the level of intelligence they 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 use for this is like that of a child um what bothers me about that is first of all wild players are mostly old people like me 30s 40s like 50s i mean there may have been some younger people that started when i did but like the people who have been the longest and given them the most money those people are in their like at least 20s so why are you writing down to that level for somebody who's like 20 years old and older? Um, I'm reading the phone in my post because it was so much I couldn't remember it. So then the whole issue of the storyline itself. So you have Nathanos. He's a dude. He's a good archer. He knows how to shoot bow and arrow. In the past, before the Scourge hit um, Lord Aron, he was a great archer and he was under Sylvanas, and he was one of the only human recruits that Sylvanas picked, and whatever, 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 whatever. Anyways, nothing special about this guy, except that he's annoying as heck. He's really annoying. He makes great, great jokes. Um, and he has two Valkyries. Um, the people that they're fighting against would be Taronda and Malfurion. So... If you just Google Taronda and what she's done and how old she is and all the things she's I'm not even going to go into it. Like, I'm sure there's whole videos about it. And Malfurion, like, this guy is so overclassed. Like, no hope. Keep in mind, Malfurion was killing Sylvanas before Sourfang intervened. So she was like, what, 10, 20% health? So this guy's boss, Sylvanas, was almost killed by Malfurion single-handedly no help keep that in mind now Nathanos has uh two Valkyries with him and people keep saying that the Valkyries are buffing him the Valkyries are powering him up the Valkyries are keeping him safe the Valkyries are protecting him um didn't we kill two Valkyries in Trial of Crusader what is the difference between those Valkyries and the giant ones with the last name? Because, you know, in Warcraft, if you get a last name, I'm just saying, if you're a villain and you have a last name, you're a big villain. So, my thing is, these Valkyries have last names. They're a big part of the Trial Crusader. I call them mini-bosses, but still, they're bosses. What is different between these Valkyries that are named and the one name Valkyries that follow Sylvanas around and keep her alive. What's the difference? What makes them better? Nobody's expounded on that or explained that at all. So if we as a player can go into Trial Crusader and one shot those Valkyries right now, okay? We don't have the Night Warrior buff. We're not 10,000 years old. We didn't fight the Burning Legion. We didn't fight Undead because, you know, Tyrande actually did fight Undead and stuff too. But um, we didn't do any of that. Well, technically we did, but... Compared to her, we are like babies. But we went in and we killed two Valkyries for sport. For Trial of the Crusader, just to show that we could do it. For what was like a pep rally. Like, ooh, we're going to kill the Lich King. Trial of the Crusader, go in there. There was a giant pep rally. And we killed two Valkyries. But, you know, 
they have trouble fighting two Valkyries and one dead guy. So I asked some questions on my post. Um, why is Tyrande focused on Valkyries? And she said on there, um, two uh, uh, Nathanael's Blight Collar lurks nearby with two of the Banshee Queen's Valkyrie. Uh, take Blight Collar, the Valkyrie of mine. Uh, Black Collar yet lives, but at the cost of one of his queen's Valkyrie. Why does it matter? Who cares? Why? I don't care who are people or theory crafters. Oh, that means that she could die. She could die if they let her, but they won't. And they've already said they won't. So it's like the whole like snap with the Marvel Universe. We read the comic books. We know what happens. We kind of have a general idea of what happens. So... We're not really that worried about the character. So you telling me that we're not worried about the character, excuse me, there's a lot of them. So you telling me that Sylvanas is vulnerable to, to dying, but then you have a developer out just lollygagging and saying what he wants to and says, oh yeah, well, she's not going to die. Why do we care if one Valkyrie dies if we all know that she's not going to die and she's already protected by plot armor? Do you see the issue with that? It takes all of the importance and immediacy out of that whole transaction what was the point you just canceled out all of the suspense everything you just the person running his mouth literally just ruined that whole war front that whole scenario oh well she has so much more story to tell we can't just kill her off um so why are we concerned if one factory dies what's what what's the let, what's the net gain on that? What what is that? And pretty much the reason why I asked why does she even need to be buffed? Because it's Tyrande. Like really, okay. The reason why all of this is sound ridiculous and all of this makes no sense is because they have put no effort into writing this at all. What kills me is I know a lot of friends and stuff from university that were English majors and they can't find a job in their major. They can't find jobs. And you have somebody writing for a like billion dollar company. It's so hard to find good help. Let's blight this. For we have a forest to blight. We are forsaken. That's what they give us. They We pay $15 a month for this content. That's the best they can do. That it just kills me to know that I'm paying for I'm torn because I want to quit. But at the same time, I have all these friends that I like playing with. And I like seeing them and joking with them and stuff. And I feel like I would be losing out because somebody can't be bothered to hold these people accountable. So I'm trying to do that. Um, I'm sure there's lots of fanboys or whatever. Man, you crazy. Stop cutting up around there. I see you. Anyways, I don't know who that is. He's just drive, driving me nuts, jumping up and down. Mm -hmm. But, um, why does she need to be buffed? It's because they pretty much have written themselves into a corner. They painted themselves into a corner. They made the Forsaken look so strong and so the Horde is so powerful. Da, 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 da. They seem to have forgotten or they don't even care about the lore of the Alliance characters or anything. They don't care that they're powerful. They have made it so that they are so weak. The Night Elves are so weak and so sad. They need a buff to deal with some undead characters, like one undead guy. She needs a buff for that because that's how badly they have written. It's like a circle. They wrote them weak. They ignored the character. They ignored the Lord. They ignored everything just so they could prop up Sylvanas and all the Forsaken and the Horde people because, you know, they are clearly Horde biased and they don't care. So they, they propped them up as best as they could. And then now it's coming back around. Oh crap, the Alliance need a moment where they shine. Um, we just totally sh like shat on them for all this expansion. So um, what do we do? Oh, let's buff them. So now we buff them. And now we buff the Alliance, but we can't let them be too strong. So what do we do? Let's put Nathanos there. He's strong. Do you see? It's a circle of nonsense. Just complete and other trash. Just trash. Um, I, on the post I made, I pretty much gave them some writing references. I'm not going to read them because probably copyright and whatever, but I did cite them on the post I made, which I know people laugh at me all the time because I used to cite, I cite like 
stuff on post, but it's called a book. I'm just asking somebody who makes, I don't know, probably like three figures or whatever. I don't know how much they, they can't be paying them that much to do this. <laughs> Not even. Um, <laughs> pay for like $50 per, like, per, per, uh, I don't, how that works. I don't know, 10 cent per word or something like that. I don't know what they get paid. I don't know. It can't be that because they would have wrote more if they got paid per, per word. Um, the point of it is, or maybe they don't even get paid. Maybe it's just some guy in the back, like, type something that's about to hoard. Okay. Um, take some time. I don't know if anybody's ever watched this or whatever. I'm going to put this on YouTube. It probably doesn't matter. Please, take some time. Pick up a book and learn how to write. I know you may not be a real writer. I mean, I have a book that's published, but you may not. And you may not have gone to school for writing. And that that's not okay. Really, it's not that you have writers that don't have any educational background. That's not okay. But um, if you're going to have somebody who's uneducated and doesn't know how to write, um, don't let them use cliches. When you're reading over this, developers or whoever writers, when you're reading over this, um, stop them. Say, whoa, well, Bob, um... Sounds like I've heard of Bob, this this whole uh, it's so hard to find good help these days. It's a little overdone, Bob. Can you go back in there and um fix that? I mean, like it would have just taken like two seconds to go pull that person aside and say this is not working. Redo that. It's bad. It's we have a forest to blight. Are your characters that stupid? Like they don't have anything ed like really edgy to say. Is, is your edge even pretend? Like, the Forsaken Edge is not even real? You can't say anything? Let me see if I can think of anything better. Let's see. Anything better than... We have a Forest of Blight. How about, uh... That, uh well, just to say, well, the, the guy in, uh, in the Burning Crusade, uh, the, uh... Let's see, we were talking about destroying forests here, Fred, okay? How about, how about, how about instead of them talking about it, just show them blighting the forest? That could be it. I mean, it might be edgy, you know, completely edgy and never heard of, but just take a blight thing and throw it so we get the idea that there is an imminent panic and a situation going on. Or, or better yet, let's think about this in more detail. Um, I know when I was flying over there, it was already blood in the forest. So, why is he saying we have a fort? Okay. Well, we're not going to get caught up in that one. Um, another thing I got caught up on was the fact that they made the voice actor sound excited when she said she killed the one Valkyrie. Let me tell you, let's say I'm at work and somebody ate my sandwich, okay? I mean, it's just a sandwich. I had a long day. I've been typing spreadsheets all day. I'm so tired. I haven't eaten anything because I haven't stopped to work. I go into the lunchroom. I open up the, the fridge for the communal fridge. Somebody ate all of my lunch and left the Ziploc bags in the bag. And not only that, they put a weird smear on my lunchbox that I can't get out, okay? I'm going to be pissed, okay? That's just lunch. I will be upset. I will throw stuff. I will go and complain to who, security, HR. I'll go complain. Somebody's going to know that they ruined my lunch. They're going to pull security camera video. Stuff is going down. Okay? This person has lost everything. Her people don't believe her no more. Her, her eyes are black. What is, what is that? She can never get out of that. Like, ew. <laughs> I mean, my fear and probably going to leave her for another elf. Like, she lost all of her people. She had to adopt some kid that was the last night of. She's too old for children. My thing is, oh my god. I killed the I killed the Valkyrie. I'm so happy. You didn't come there to kill a Valkyrie. That wasn't one of the goals. You came there for vengeance. You came to take your place back. You didn't come to kill a Valkyrie. And it's stupid to me. They wrote the, they wrote the whole thing as if she was wanted just to kill factories that is not the point of her being there i see because they're really bad at foreshadowing they're trying to set something up 
But again, they're writing a check they're not going to cash because they're not going to kill her anyways. They're trying to make it seem like, oh, well, um, it's dangerous for her. Our queen is in danger because one of her, her Valkyries is dead. And the Alliance had to do it. So let's let's find a way to make the Alliance do it. Oh, speaking of plot and making stuff up to fit the plot, Sira, oh my God. Okay. Are you really going to tell me Let's say I'm at a party, okay? I'm at a party, and everybody there is drunk. They're a horrible, it's a horrible drunk party. They're throwing up everywhere. They um puking everywhere. They um they're having drunken bar fights. They have like they breaking off the edge of bottles. They're stabbing each other. There's a brawl in the middle of the room. You come there with you and your girlfriends. There's three girlfriends. Y'all come in. Y'all have the cute little outfits on, you know. You come in to find a, a specific man, okay. You're not really worried about the rest of it. You come in to find one dude, all right. You come up in there. And you see all this shit going on. Two of your girlfriends look at you and say, okay, well, um, we're going to go to this well-lit area over here. Bars. I want you to go into that narrow, dark hallway with all those drunk dudes, okay. And um, we'll meet with you tomorrow morning. And then they just leave you. Then they just leave you at the party and abandon you in a place full of all these drunk people, bar fights, mosh pits, dark alleys. Like, they just leave you there. That's the same thing that happens in this storyline. So after everything, they know because she used her owl to scout out the place and clearly she's aware of the surroundings because she knows there's valkyries there they all kind of know that the place is overrun with horror but they let one lady go out by herself she's not even the best warden like if Maeve did it i was like okay well she my my eve went out and she she did what she had to do and you know whatever she's pretty good she's been hunting a little bit forever and she she's um she's pretty neat so let her go. She can. She's self-sufficient. She's strong and independent. She all right. This lady? Are you serious? You just let her go to her death? Okay. Well, we need a new warfront commander. So let's just have her conveniently be written to go there. And then she'll die alone. And I mean, this is such bad writing. Bad plotting. You're doing stuff to fit the narrative you want to push. But it's not logical. You're not letting the story itself guide. You have this idea in mind. But the way you're executing it is poor. It's poor execution. It's poor writing. It's horrible. Um, then this whole thing with Nathanos having superpowers out of nowhere. You can't make stuff up. I know this is Warcraft and they make stuff up all the time. But you should make it up within the, the realm of possibilities. He cannot be on par with loon Because you don't want to lose that character. Use a different character. Don't use him. Let him die and then let the Valkyrie raise him. You cannot let him scrap. They were going toe to toe for like several minutes. You cannot let him scrap with the player and the freaking avatar of a loon. That, that makes no sense. Who are these people? Okay. And back to Sira. If I'm a horde person, I have this weird like foothold I'm trying to hold on to. Um, trying to keep the whole continent by myself and this this is the foothold I've chosen a dark shore um, The one thing I'm not gonna do is leave it in the hands of a lady that just popped up from being dead and decided to be a traitor Because if she betrayed the people she's been with for 10,000 years or thousands of years What loyalty is she gonna have to you? Except for the stupid loyalty that stupid writing made for her It makes no sense. If you're trying to make a clever villain or an intelligent villain, why would they use characters that would hate? They need to fix it. They need to find a way. I don't I don't care. Everybody's theorizing that they're going to have uh, Daylorin become like the new Sylvanas and have her kill Sylvanas or whatever. Because there's, I think in the, in, in the Horde side, there's a scene where she's looking at her hands like she realized what she became and she's sad about it or whatever. And you know, Sarah's like written on the Horde side, written to say, well, I have reasons for joining the Horde, but I can't tell you right now because we're busy. 
why are they even letting this pass as content and who is approving it who why why do they have jobs why are they employed you know how many people would love to do this job and would be good at it why are they still making game why are they involved in this if you think that somebody is going to be brutally murdered watch everybody they love get their head cut off burned alive then wake up and join the person that did all of that because they mad at, at a fiction well they're mad at the god of their universe but then you see the actual avatar of a loon there in the flesh so she's she has not abandoned them she's right there and then if you read eulogy the loon even makes them go to sleep so they don't feel the pain of dying so she's there my thing is like the only reason why the Nidos even died is because of horde bias and writing anyways like they they made the goddess powerless so that they could make a character that's angry at the goddess so that she can irrationally join with does that make any sense can can somebody just make sense of this get a grip blizzard activision activision blizzard get a grip grab hold of your money maker the -hmm. thing that makes you the most money y'all already asked people if they had cell phones that's enough grab hold of what you have hold it tight okay don't let it slip through with stuff like um we are forsaken uh it's hard to find good help you know what's really hard to find good riders it seems like y'all having a hard time doing that all right bye